showed the university's traditional colors, gold and blue. West Virginia will be in white. Nealon, who celebrated his 53rd birthday on January 1st yesterday. An entire state hungry for national attention gets their chance to share the spotlight today with Nealon and his Mountaineers. And now we await the entrance of the number one team in the nation coming in, the Irish of Notre Dame. Nealon, who broke Pappy Lewis's marks as the winningest coach in West Virginia history. The Notre Dame band now is circling toward uh, the stands and soon the Irish will make their appearance. Again for those of you just joining us Notre Dame number one West Virginia number three only the eighth time in the last 50 years two unbeaten untied teams have met in a bowl game to decide the national championship. And it's the second time in three years that event has happened here in Tempe, Arizona. Here comes Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, the winningest university in this football century. The 52-year-old Lou Holtz trying to add still another national title to the winningest football program in the country. Rockney, Leahy, Parsegian, Devine all won championships in their third year. This is Lou Holtz's third season in South Bend with the Irish of Notre Dame. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen. We're delighted to start this new year with this national championship game. And Merlin, uh, in our time and in the time 20 years in the future, you go to any campus in the country and someone's gonna say, we're number one. And what a way to start it for us. A wonderful way. And not only that, Dick, this is not only an exciting moment, an exciting game with its own reward at the end, but the opportunity to wear that championship ring for a lifetime. You were down in the locker rooms, Notre Dame and West Virginia before the game. I had forgotten how quiet it is in a college <laughs> locker room. And there are 118 players dressing in West Virginia's locker room, 108 in that Notre Dame locker room. You could have heard a pin drop, but a quiet intensity in both locker rooms. All right, we've talked about the coaches. We're going to talk much more about the two quarterbacks, two brilliant players, Tony Rice of Notre Dame and Major Harris of West Virginia. On whom does the greatest pressure fall? I think it's really on Major Harris today. And the reason for that is that the strength of this Notre Dame team, in my opinion, is on the defensive side. And there's something else that Major carries. I think if he can get off to a fast start, he can bolster the whole confidence level of this West Virginia team. But he's going against the strength of uh, Notre Dame. There's no question about that. And the one thing that Notre Dame's defense has done well in the big games they have played during the year, particularly against Miami, where they had seven turnovers, and against USC, where they had four turnovers and a touchdown in each of those games defensively, they have forced bad plays from the offensive team. Well, down on the field, joining us for our telecast of this Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl, the 18th anniversary, is one of our NBC colleagues, Reggie Rucker. Thank you, Dick. Football players need to feel confident with the playing surface under them. This field is grass. Now, it's a warned field, but I think it'll be okay for today's game. It's moderately fast, and if it rains, it's going to get worse. Now, Notre Dame played nine of its 11 games on grass this year. However, the West Virginia Mountaineers played nine of their 11 games on AstroTurf. Football players will tell you, and I can uh, back that up, that when you come from AstroTurf to grass, you feel sluggish, you feel slower. They don't like it. So with this game being as close as it is, if there is any kind of advantage whatsoever, it could mean the difference. Thank you, Reggie. We'll be visiting with Reggie during the course of the game as he gives us a feel from the sidelines as well as uh, hoping to 
visit with some of the great names of football that are with us here today in Tempe. The temperature around the mid 50s. We had a light sprinkle actually earlier in the day. Cloud cover here in the greater Phoenix area. Perfect day for football. The white jerseyed Mountaineers will receive. Dick, I think the one thing that is very obvious as you feel the coolness in this air, both of these teams were eager to have a cool day. I think the thing they did not want because they trained in the cold so much was a very hot day. The Irish to tee it up and Billy Hackett, who is their long range kicker, will kick off. 13th time in bowl history. And of course, most recently last year in the Orange Bowl when Miami beat number one Oklahoma and two years ago here at Sun Devil Stadium when Penn State beat Miami and now unbeaten untied Notre Dame against unbeaten untied West Virginia Hackett a sophomore from Sarasota gets it started. Virginia number 33 has it at the seven yard line and the young man from Jersey City New Jersey toppled across the 25 by Michael Smalls number 48 a linebacker West Virginia's offense reads this way Major Harris a sophomore A.B. Brown their top runner Craig Taylor the fullback Holtz thinks he's the best fullback Notre Dame played this year Watch 88 Reggie Rembert 4 3 speed. He's six feet seven inches tall. Calvin Phillips leads the team in receptions. 81 Keith Wynn. They don't go to that often. Five year seniors in the offensive line Rick Phillips, John Stroya, Kevin Koken, Bob Kovac, and Brian Smiter. From the 26 yard line, Harris on the roll. Going deep. And Keith Wynn, we told you they don't throw to the tight end that often. Wynn has 13 catches this year, and they go long to win a senior from Dayton, Ohio. Todd Light on the coverage. The Irish, one of the top defensive teams in the country. At the end, Flash Gordon inside, the biggest of the Notre Dame linemen, George Williams. He's around 280. Chris Zorich, the nose tackle, Jeff Alm. Has uh, three interceptions, the tackle. Frank Stamps, watch him on the blitz. Second and ten. And a whistle from the officials. Problem with the clock, apparently. Dick, uh, the Irish won the toss, deferred to the second half. And I believe they wanted to put their defense on the field first today. There's Lou Holtz. He was a reserve linebacker at Kent State when Don Nealon was the starting quarterback at Bowling Green in the Mid-America Conference. Pacing the sidelines. He's tried to treat this game as just a game for his players. Don Nealon has been outspoken. This is the most important game for his team and the most important game in his coaching life. It's Calvin Phillips in motion and the give to A.B. Brown finds a hole. And darts out across the 30 to the 33. George Streeter, a senior from Chicago, came up to meet him. Third down and three. Here's the rest of the Notre Dame defensive alignment. Linebackers and the strength of the team here. Mike Stonebreaker, Wes Pritchett. Those two men made uh, several All-America teams. Top three. Smagala and Lido in the corners. Streeter and Terrell, the safety men. A veteran line. Supporting Major Harris as he looks for three in the first option of the day. And Notre Dame reads it well, and Harris has dropped short of the first down at the 35-yard line by Michael Stonebreaker, number 42. That name familiar, a great name for a linebacker, Stonebreaker. His dad, Steve, played with the Lions and Colts and New Orleans. Stonebreaker playing with a bit of a stomach virus today, missed a day of practice, and Frank Stams, his roommate, also a bit of a bug today. We'll keep an eye on them during the game. Back to punt, Lance Carrion for West Virginia, averaging 41 a punt. And Ricky Waters, number 12, is the deep man for Notre Dame, returned two punts, four touchdowns. Oh, good kick all the way to the 16. Waters from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, has a crease and is out to the 35-yard line. 
The tackle made by Theron Ellis, number 66, one of the inside linebackers for West Virginia. 49-yard kick, 19 yards on Waters return. Look at the Irish offensively. Tony Rice at quarterback. He, like Major Harris, likes to run the ball. Mark Green, Anthony Johnson, they'll share the running toil duties. Ricky Waters and Rakib Ismail, speedy wide receiver. And Derek Brown, a brilliant freshman, is the tight end. Up the middle, we go to Anthony Johnson, the big fullback, and he has two or three, and then he smothered. Uh, charge spearheaded by number 49, the leading tackler for the Mountaineers, Chris Herring. Andy Heck made several All-America teams. Mike Brennan moves from tackle to guard. Tim Ryan, a groin injury, not in there at guard. Pelt, Gruenhard, and Brown, the offensive line. Second down and six. The option and the toss and trouble. Tony Brooks has bounced out of bounds for a loss. Back at the 38-yard line, Chris Parker, number 94, was there first. Parker from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, in his fourth year. Jim Gray and Mike Fox join him on the defensive line for the Mountaineers. Ronaldo Turnbull has 12 sacks. Watch him in pass situations for Ron Ellis. Chris Herring, the leading tackler. Robert Pickett at the linebacking spots. We'll give you the deep four in a moment. Third down and seven. And Rice's first pass attempt. He breaks away from Parker, 45-50. And Rice is all the way forward. He's still on his feet and tripped up at the 32-yard line. Derrick Brown threw a key block downfield, a 31-yard ad lib by Tony Rice. That's the danger of a quarterback that can run the football. And Rice basically has great running strength. They like to use him throwing the ball short or deep, but he is not afraid to pull it down and do what he does best, which is to make his way on foot upfield. Rice, with 700 yards rushing, led Notre Dame this year. Broke all the quarterback rushing records. He gives off this time to Mark Green. Take a Tony Brooks, and Brooks is uh, stopped after a short gain at the 31. The rest of the Mountaineer defense, let's check the four defensive backs. Willie Edwards, Alvoid Mays led the team in interceptions during the year with five. Lawrence Drumgoal for the injured Daryl Whitmore. Whitmore uh, broken fibula in the Syracuse game. Maybe the best defensive back won't play. And Bull Orlando, a tough tackler, number 22, moves from strong to free safety. Second and long, and not much there for Anthony Johnson. Johnson from South Bend, Indiana, still on his feet. And he and Orlando. Talk about uh, what's ahead here in 1989. I'm not so sure I'd want to go down and bump heads with Bo Orlando. He's only 5'10 and 173 pounds, Nick, but he can bench press 420 pounds, and he's, he is the heart and soul. The reason they're angry is because the touchdown there. They touched the ball down, the whistle had blown. And what they're saying is, why are you running? He said, hey, why are you grabbing me? <laughs> Obviously a misunderstanding. Big third down. Inside the Mountaineer 30, and it's Rice on the option. No yardage there. In fact, coming up with the ball is 49 Herring. But the whistle had blown a dead, and that brings up fourth down and a choice for Lou Holtz. Will he go to the field goal? Or will we, we could see Billy Hackett, who has kicked the long field goals over Reggie Ho. It is Hackett that's in there, and they tee it up at the 35-yard line, a 45-yard Kick his longest this year, 44. It is good. So Billy Hackett, who made three field goals during the regular season, gets Notre Dame on the board first. 10-25 remaining in the opening quarter. 72,000 plus. A tremendously difficult ticket to find, as you can imagine. Around 11, 12,000 allocated to the two universities. And of course, alums from around the country eager to be part of this uh, celebration of the new year. 
as football's number one might well be decided and the Irish lead 3-0 on a 45-yard field goal by Billy Hackett who will now kick it off to Eugene Napoleon. It comes to Napoleon at the nine. Who good special teams. Number 48, Michael Smalls. That's two tackles on two kickoffs for him as he stops Napoleon at the 21-yard line. You can hear this hit all the way up in the stands. I'm not sure that he was even aware of exactly where the man was, but he got enough of him with that shoulder just to knock him right to the ground. Notre Dame scoring on the field goal after they took the ball at the third own 35 and got down to the West Virginia 28. The Mountaineers taking the opening kickoff did not register a first down. This is Anthony Brown picking up about five to the 26, tripped up by sophomore nose tackle Chris Zorich, number 50. Dick, one of the things we're looking at right now is two teams kind of trying to find themselves. They have not played a game, West Virginia, since below before Thanksgiving and Notre Dame until right just after Thanksgiving. It's been a while since they've been on the field. They're just searching things out right at the moment. I favor the offense or the defense? I think the defense initially, for sure. Brown, short yardage. Trying his left side, Zorich again in on the tackle. Make that Craig Taylor the ball carry as he has his first call. Taylor, a 215-pound senior from Linden, New Jersey, and there's Stonebreaker and company with a tackle. Zorro, number 50, <laughs> Chris Zorich right on the middle, a linebacker who's been transformed into a nose tackle. And I'll tell you, he is a major force. He has the great build, the great leverage, short legs, powerful legs, gets up underneath, and he'll hit you. Huge uh, forearms and biceps, and he has 4.68 speed. Major Harris gets away from Stonebreaker, has a man open, but can't hit Craig Taylor. Taylor had the ball in his mitts, but couldn't tuck it away. Williams, the defensive tackle, and Stonebreaker, the linebacker, pressuring Harris. Much has been written about Major Harris's passing ability, and he is a good passer. He also is an excellent scrambler, good at rolling out and buying time. But this is a very quick Notre Dame defensive team, and they've got a lot of folks who can come in there steaming to put some pressure on you. That was 30 stams, the last man to put the heat on Major Harris. So Lance Curran will punt it again. Ooh, high snap, and he just does get it away. Low spiral, Ricky Waters inside the 30. And struggles out to the 39-yard line. 45 yards on the punt, 11 yards on the return. It's Notre Dame's ball leading 3-0 in the Irish 39-yard line with 8.54 left in the first quarter. Welcome back to the Fiesta Bowl. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olson and Reggie Rucker. The Cotton Bowl is a final, and the Bruins of UCLA beat the Hogs of Arkansas 17-3. Terry Donahue has won seven straight bowl games a record, and it's Clemson beating Oklahoma 13-6 in a defensive struggle in the Citrus Bowl. Here, 3-0 Notre Dame. They give inside to the fullback, Anthony Johnson, and he plows out for about nine yards to the Irish 49-yard line. Johnson, who has struggled with ankle problems all season long, limps off the field. What a disappointment. You prepare yourself mentally, and you try and do everything you can to get ready for a game like this, and then early in the going, you take an injury and head for the sideline, and with the history he's had with that ankle, we may not see much more of him today. Second down and one. Tailback Tony Brooks spinning at the 50, and he has the first down at the 50-yard line. Ron Ellis, a junior from Norristown, Pennsylvania, made the tackle. Michael Fox, Mike Fox, number 61, had an excellent penetration and just missed the tackle on Brooks in there. Otherwise, they would have had him well before they got that first down. First down for the Irish at the 50-yard line. The option, and now Rice to throw, and has a man wide open, the tight end, Derrick Brown, to the 27-yard line. Lou Holtz has come to the defense of Tony Rice repeatedly during the past few weeks. 
They've talked about Rice's poor passing, and Holt said very quickly, he's not a poor passer. He can throw the football. What Holtz has done is to give him an opportunity to throw in a restricted pass offense. He doesn't go back there and try to read too many receivers, but they use him effectively, and when the running game is going, look out. Leading 3-0, the Irish are on the move. Here's Green. Finally pulled down inside the 15. Another Notre Dame first down. One of the things that Lou Holtz wanted to see today was a good, fast start by his team. He said, quite frankly, we're not the kind of team that comes from behind well. Of course, they haven't had to do that often this year. What they want to do is run the football, basically, and then throw play-action passes to take advantage of the defense. Double tight end now is Frank Jacobs and Derek Brown book in the line, and the give goes straight ahead for short yardage. Braxton Banks, who has replaced Anthony Johnson at fullback, his first call, Pickett and company make the tackle. Or oh, when Notre Dame gets inside the 20, they not only score, they score touchdowns. Look at that high percentage. They're also very conservative down here. They do not throw the ball very often inside the 20-yard line. Second down, seven for the first down, 10 plus for a touchdown. Rice keeps. Rice is to the three-yard line and close to a first down. Bo Orlando, 22, finally brought him to the turf. And it is a well-worn field for the first time. Sun Devil Stadium had two tenants, not only the Arizona State Sun Devils here on the campus, but the St. Louis football Cardinals of the NFL. The beer option, and Tony Rice able to get the opportunity to go up inside and if he has it he'll take it he doesn't want to pitch the ball down there unless he has to and now well he runs it as Southern Californians know after watching uh, the Irish beat the Trojans and knock them off number one it's first and goal at the three <laughs> former St. Louis Cardinals the Phoenix Cardinals obviously have also and served here at Sun Devil Stadium during the course of the year. Let's go down to Reggie Rucker. Jim Gray has been injured. They've taken him inside. He's the freshman middle guard. That's one of the reasons why Notre Dame is having so much success inside. They don't know if he'll be back. He's gone inside, and he could possibly return. Second and goal, Notre Dame. Waters. Ricky Waters, who is a tailback, but uh, was switched to flanker in the spring. And uh, he has stopped shy of the goal line. Third and goal. James Fuller, 84, has replaced Jim Gray at the nose guard, made the hit. One of the trademarks of this West Virginia defense is strength. And they have some powerful people up front on offense and defense. Oh, look at that. Just reached up and grabbed a man and jerked him down. Pat Marlette, I believe. And to make that fine stop off the ground. It's Banks. No, Rice keeps. Is he in? No, it is Mark Shy of the goal line. Banks actually, had he been given the ball, would have had a touchdown. Now they're going to take a second look. No signal yet. Fourth down, says referee Frank Shepard. And Lou Holt says we're going for six. Take a peek at it. The fake here to the fullback who is in the end zone. He's over the top, but it's the keep by Rice, and he's double teamed right there on the line. Stood up. That's the Ron Ellis, number 36, who did the major damage, but there were plenty of other West Virginians there to help. Anthony Johnson is the man to watch the fullback or Rice on a keeper. Johnson, touchdown. Anthony Johnson, who scored five times this year, the junior from South Bend, Indiana, who was married just before Christmas. And that'll be one he'll be able to tell his bride about. Well, and I said we might not see more of Anthony Johnson today with that ankle. This is the kind of game that if you can hobble out there, you're going to play, and obviously the kind of an ankle that must get better in a hurry because he's right back in to score the touchdown. So... Four shots from the three-yard line and a bobble. 
snap, and the Irish will not get the extra point. Alvoid Moyes, number three, was first in to tackle the holder, Pete Graham. So the score is nine to nothing. Lou Holtz, like the Irish becoming a fan, but uh, casual about that touchdown that gives his team a nine nothing advantage through its best season in 97 years. You see that third game, Maryland down 14 nothing and then rallied to a 55 24 victory. Then Pittsburgh, the two losses are the two wins, Virginia Tech, East Carolina, were their two lowest scoring games and interestingly, both on grass surface. And it was Boston College, Penn State, Cincinnati games all over 50 points. Rutgers, a scare, the Meadowlands, and then they finished with that dramatic night at home in Morgantown against Syracuse. Don Nealon trailing 9 0 early. 4.29 left in the opening quarter, and Major Harris to throw. Underneath, he goes to the tight end, Keith Wynn, out of the 32 yard line. Talking to Don Neal, and he said maybe our best offensive plan would be to go directly to the drop back pass and just allow Major Harris to get back there and throw the football unless he gets rushed and then let him scramble because good things just seem to happen. He is not a coach, or this is not a team that is afraid to come from behind. They really feel that they have the confidence to do it, and they also feel that they're a team of destiny. And it's all Notre Dame thus far in the first quarter, 9-0. A.B. Brown is shy of the first down as he hits the 35 and runs into All-America Frank Stams, number 30, from Akron, Ohio. Well, right now, Destiny needs a few first downs. <laughs> There's Stams. He, his parents and grandparents from Greece. Well, that's good power up front by Zorich, former linebacker, and Zorro keeping things stuffed on the line, and that is a very powerful offensive line. All those guys bench press more than 400 pounds up front. West Virginia looking for its first first down, and they don't get it. Stuffed right at the line of scrimmage was fullback Craig Taylor, so that's three possessions for the Mountaineers. And three times, apparently, Notre Dame has stopped them. Now, it might be close enough for a measurement from our angle. It looks as if it's about a half yard short. Volkar in there. Let's see what happens to Zorich working on Kevin Koken. 57. Boy, Volkar shooting up from the outside just like a rocket. And he was the man that made the play. Tremendous hit by Volkar. Past years. Notre Dame not known for its speed, but on both sides of the line of scrimmage, they can fly. And you saw Bolkar fill the hole. Carrion had a busy first quarter and he gets away. Another beautiful spiral that'll clear Waters' head. He doesn't pick it up. And West Virginia downs it at the seven yard line. What a kick by Carrion. His longest this year was 57 yards, and that matched his long punt earlier in the season. Timeout 241 remaining in this 1989. Welcome back to the Fiesta Bowl. We're late in the first quarter. Notre Dame has had the ball twice and scored twice a 45 yard field goal by Billy Hackett. And then a 61 yard drive to a touchdown. And on fourth and one, fullback Anthony Johnson scored. Missed the extra point when the snap was bobbled. And West Virginia trying to call upon its emotional resources. That's Kevin Koken, one of the offensive captains, talking to the other offensive linemen and saying, let's take charge offensively in this game. Rice gives on the slant to the fullback Braxton Banks from Hayward, California, where he attended Moreau High School. He was the uh, editor of the newspaper there in high school, so he knows how to write his own headlines. Right now, work cut out for Bob Shaw, the defensive coordinator of this West Virginia Mountaineer defense. And I'm sure he's saying to his troops, we need to come up with something big. There he is on the sideline. And I'm sure his pulse, blood pressure, both rising at the moment. And a whistle. And we may have had the uh, I think delay maybe, of game. Maybe a defensive player into the neutral zone. He's pointing to the defensive side of the line. Defense, offense. And the offense. This is 
NFL Hall of Famer and Notre Dame legend Paul Horning. Paul, 9-0. So far, so good. Well, so far, Notre Dame has really looked good offensively and defensively. But they're back down in the hole, Reggie. And you know one thing, this game's not over with by a long stretch. So you're not feeling comfortable yet? Oh, I like to see him get out of this hole, I'll tell you that. Tony Rice is a pretty good quarterback, huh? Tony Rice is as quick a quarterback as I've ever seen, especially playing here at Notre Dame. He's rushed for over 800 yards. He is sensational. How about this business that he can't throw the football? He can throw it. Don't worry about it. You'll see it later on. After the penalty, second and 12, Rice throws out to Waters. Incomplete. Incomplete the call. It was a forward pass. Penalty, by the way, was against the offense, and they moved that back as you were able to see at home. This was a good pass, certainly catchable, but as is so often the case, you've got to catch the football before you look downfield. Yeah, it's a tough one, though, right down at his ankles. Yeah, it is that. Not as good a pass when we looked at it in three play <laughs> as it was when we looked at it from up here. Tony Rice, by the way, that run of 31 yards, uh, while well, that was a big one. It goes into the record book. We'll tell you why. It was draw play to Green, and he smothered out at the eight-yard line, and Notre Dame will have to punt for the first time. Mike Fox, 61. Senior tackle made the stop. Going back to Rice, that was the longest run ever by a Notre Dame player in a bowl game, and it broke a 27-yard run by one of the four horsemen, Jim Crowley, against Stanford in the Rose Bowl game, 1925. Jim Sexton is the punter. Average just under 39 a kick. And he'll boot it from about his goal line. Grantis Bell, number one, is at midfield. He scuffs it. But it takes oh, a fine roll. Bounce. That was about a 20-yard roll to the 47 of West Virginia. First down Mountaineers, their best field position at the start of the series by 21 yards. One of the things that this West Virginia team now has to do is to take advantage of their experience level. Here's the man that has to light the firecracker right here, Major Harris. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Don Nealon's team come out right now and say, let's just get in behind that offensive line and let's start hammering and opening some holes. Let's start doing what we do best. In the eye. Now at midfield, that changes a lot of play calling. That's Calvin Phillips in motion. And the give to A.B. Brown. Tailback gets only to the 47. Back to the line of scrimmage. George Williams and Chris Zorich collaborate on the stop. Williams 69, 50 is Zorich from Chicago. It's amazing how little of the game the coaches see other than the head man. That's Joe Moore, the offensive line coach, talking to his troops. Harris trying to wiggle free, gets out to the 50, a short gain of three. That'll bring up third down and seven. Flash Gordon, senior from Hillside, New Jersey. We talked to, made the tackle. Excuse me, Dick. We talked about a match of speed and strength. Well, obviously, speed and strength reflected in the 88 offense of West Virginia. 43 points a game. Second in the nation. We look at the total yards and rushing yardage, but that's not going to help you today. Shut out the first quarter. The defense of the Irish has been tough. That's the early story. Notre Dame, the nation's number one team coming in, leads 9-0 after the first 15 minutes. a football sandwich we're in the middle the Hall of Fame game won by Syracuse over LSU and later from the Orange Bowl in Miami it'll be the Hurricanes of the University of Miami against the Huskers of Nebraska Major Harris third and seven at midfield trailing nine nothing we open the second quarter still no first downs and Harris hit from behind that ball up for grabs and incomplete Frank Stamps is right there with Keith Wynn. And again, the Mountaineers forced to bring the punting unit on. I'm sure some West Virginia people saying, why wasn't there a penalty called? Because there was a jam on the receiver before the ball arrived. But this ball is tipped. Watch the pressure from Stamps right here. And he touches the ball right there. Once the ball is tipped, you can't have interference. That's why they won't call interference on Streeter who is there to strip the ball out of number 81 wins hands. 
Ams, who has played his biggest games against Miami and Southern California. He's tough rushing the passer. Ricky Waters is the deep man at the 10 as Carrion kicks again. Fair catch called for by Waters at the 16 yard line. First quarter statistics certainly favoring the Irish of Notre Dame as they scored on two of their three possessions. No first downs yet for West Virginia. And we talked about the importance of West Virginia getting off to a fast start. That simply has not happened. Let's credit the very quick Irish defense. They just have not allowed anything to get beyond the line of scrimmage. Small gains at every turn. And right now, the mage is getting a word from Don Nealon. Hey, we got to get something cracking here. From the 16, the pitch is to Mark Green. And the senior from Riverside, California, is out near the 20-yard line for Preston Waters. Number five can make the hit from Miami. And there's Green from Poly High School in Riverside, California. One of the amazing things about this Notre Dame team is how many times they have changed their roster this year. They just have shifted things all around like you cannot believe. Six. Tony Brooks. And Brooks, for that last effort as he crossed the 25, may have picked up the first down. Herring and Pickett, the tacklers. Brooks and uh, Waters were the two players that were disciplined before the Southern California game, and both uh, realized that that was good for themselves and the team, and certainly. Might have been part of the spark emotionally that uh, helped the Irish in that big win out in Los Angeles. Now, Brooks wasn't going to be laid out here. Got here a day early. <laughs> <laughs> Waters said, you know, I used to wait. Usually you wake up and you slap that snooze button. No more. He <laughs> said, I am up. I think they got the, I got the message pretty good. It is a first down, Notre Dame. It's time for the fullback, Braxton Banks. Not easy to get him down. And... Uh, Quartet of Mountaineers finally wrestle him to the turf at the 27 yard line. Chris Parker and uh, Ronaldo Turnbull get up last. Scott Summit's playing a great deal in there. That may mean that Jim Gray, who left the game with an injury early, who had been one of the pleasant surprises and a mainstay at that nose tackle position, may not be able to get back in this ballgame. And that hurts that West Virginia position up front. Second and eight. Rice with a toss. Brooks to the 31 yard line. And again, attracting a crowd. Mike Fox, 61, and Waters, number five. Key tacklers. There's Fox, who is from Akron. Gained 40 pounds since his freshman year. Now, talking to the West Virginia players, they said he's the guy, you, even in practice, he goes full speed. Even when you're supposed to be going half speed, he hurts about as many of his own guys as he did the opposing team. But he is an intense defensive player. Well, 30 remaining in the first half, 9 0 Notre Dame. Third down call for Rice. And the toss and a fumble. And Notre Dame recovers. Braxton Banks able to fall on the ball. And of course, one of the hazards of that option is you're tossing the potato around, but uh, Banks saves it for Notre Dame and with it a first down. Chris Herring, number 49, leading tackler and really the leader of this defense with a chance at a ball on the ground. And boy, that would have been a great opportunity for West Virginia, but it's alertly saved by one of the offensive players for Notre Dame. Yeah, Banks not only keeps the ball in the Irish possession, but they get the first down. From the 38, Brooks close to the 45 and a good gain on first down. Orlando and Mays, a couple of secondary men make the stop. There's Orlando, 22. 173 pounds and bench presses 420. That's a little scary, isn't it? Mm. Good looking football player, tough. He really is the heart of that defense, and I'm sure he's frustrated right now, as are all of these West Virginia defensive players. Banks was in for Johnson, limped off the field. He's had knee problems. 
And so the Irish now have a freshman moving from tailback to fullback, Rodney Culver. He's a 212 pounder from Detroit. He played more than any other freshman running back with Notre Dame this year. And he has been good since he was very young as a freshman in high school in Detroit. He rushed for over 1,300 yards. Where's number five, Rodney Culver? I do not know what this delay is about. Perhaps the clock uh, malfunctioning. Perhaps an opportunity to talk a little bit about this Notre Dame team. And interesting to talk to, to Lou Holtz. He said, you know, we've had a good year. But he said, we're kind of ahead of schedule. We're supposed to be this good next year. And really, there is the sense that this will be a better team next year. They graduate very few upperclassmen. There's the problem. There's the problem. The 25 second clock not working. But there is the sense that the strength of this team is in the young recruiting classes brought in by Lou Holtz and with an intense perspective on speed. In fact, 28 of the players on this team run 4-6 in the 40 or less. And that was his number one priority. He said he believed Bear Bryant, who said, luck follows speed. He said, I want some luck to follow me here. <laughs> he said, it's like that uh, sign, speed kills. He said, you know, that can apply to football, too, when you have all the speed. On second down, Mark Green. Big hole, and it appears to me as they pick up the first down, Notre Dame near the 50-yard line, Merlin Olsen, that in the battle of the two lines, both sides of the ball, the Irish are beating the Mountaineers certainly appear that way. Let's look at what's happening for Chris Herring trying to read this play and get inside. Gets a nice piece of the tackler there or the ball carrier. But Brooks just too strong able to pick up the first down anyway. Dean Brown 71 the right tackle really wedged open a good opening. First down the Irish they lead 9 nothing, and they're piling up the yards on the ground. That's the way Lou Holtz likes it. A toss to Waters the speedy wide receiver a tailback and they get him in the backfield for a loss of a yard. Robert Pickett, number 45, the first man in on the tackle. It appears Jim Gray, the freshman star nose tackle, will not be back. Uh, he has taken his pads off. When a football player takes his pads off, that's an indication that he won't play again. Jim Gray injured in the opening minutes of the game. And a loss at that critical... Uh, nose guard or nose tackle position. Rice second and 11. Mountaineers looking for a pass. Rice has the option. He throws long on the run. Ismail incomplete. Now I know many of you around the country as Mays was covering and the Irish wanted uh, interference. They've heard it uh, Ragib Ismail but he uh, prefers Ragib Ismail. Well, and he is a rocket with speed of 4.28. Oh, you wonder if Rice can unload that football? And that's Al Boyd. Mays, what happens when you shoot a rocket into a void? A <laughs> <laughs> couple of interesting really? nicknames. There's the void, Al Boyd. And of course, the rocket, Ragib. Well, he avoided with that left hand, but apparently a rule, not a catchable pass anyway. No question that he made a hit. Boy, what an arm for Rice running against his body. Down the middle, complete to the tight end, and it's Derrick Brown all the way to the four-yard line. Derrick Brown, 6'7", 235, a brilliant first-year freshman. His first two catches were for touchdowns. He is a star of the future. Well, he's a star of the moment here as he catches and only a great play right there by Bo Orlando. Saves the play, saves the touchdown. Rice dumped by Bob Pickett. But nice pass, nice run. Well, threatening to make it more than 9 nothing. They've got a touchdown, Rodney Culver. Notre Dame scores again. Chris 
searing 49 an opportunity, but he overran the play. And Culver, hungry for that end zone, packs it in with ease. Now the freshman from Detroit, Culver, playing because of the injuries to the upperclassmen, Banks and Johnson at fullback, slams in for the score. And now Reggie Ho measures off his marks as he tries the extra point. Tim Grunard to snap, and Pete Graham, who bobbled the snap last time, is the holder. They try the extra point off angle, and Ho knocks it through. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish very impressively lead 16 to nothing. And you notice there's no end zone celebration here. Hope says he wants his players to look like they've been there before. Welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish have 16 points. The Mountaineers of West Virginia have zero first downs. They've got to get something going here. I wouldn't be surprised to just see him say to Major Harris, Major, get back there. Let's see you throw the football. The nice thing about college ball is with the two-point conversion, two touchdowns, two two-pointers, you're right back even in the ball game. Well, one of the guys we haven't seen so far for West Virginia, number 88, Reggie Rembert. He's that big, tall receiver who can really gallop. And they'd love to get the ball to him. They certainly need to see something started here. You see the muskets on the back of... Major's helmet there. Those are for big plays. Well, they need some big plays right now. And it wouldn't hurt to start on the kickoff and get something going. There are the muskets, symbolic of team awards as well as individual big plays. No one has made more of those during his time at West Virginia than has this man in a short span. But right now, it's not what you've done in the past that counts. It's that something needs to go now. Napoleon again who's been a busy return man as Hackett prepares to kick it off. This one is fairly short. Napoleon at his 15. Gets through the wedge and out across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Ned Bolkar 47 and 32 to 1 Francisco make the stop. Been a frustrating day for this West Virginia offense, and it's been three and out all day long. Yep, the Rockets. Reese, three and a kick, three and a kick. There's Barry Alvarez. I tell you, his troops can take some credit for that. Some fine defense from Notre Dame. Here's Harris. Going deep downfield for Rembert, incomplete. And leaping in front of the play, Pat Terrell, number 15. Had his hands on it for a moment. There's Terrell. Remember that Miami game when the Hurricanes went for the win when it was uh, a one-point game? It was Terrell that knocked that two-pointer away in the end zone. Well, you notice who was in there on the play. Wes Pritchett, number 34. Pritchett on the blitz. One of the fifth-year seniors, and there are only three of them on this Notre Dame squad making his presence felt. Well, that's why the pass was uh, not only short but offline. The toss outside goes to Under Johnson, and he is hit hard. The 41-yard line. He paid for that five-yard gain. And I believe it was Pritchett again on the outside. Looked like he may have bent his face mask on that one. But he is one of the three amigos. Pritchett, Stams, and Stonebreaker, inseparable. Let's see if it is Pritchett on the outside. 29th Magala, no, it's not. It's Pat Terrell. Pat Terrell. And the flag is on Pritchett for a late hit, apparently. Here's referee Frank Shepard. Dead Hello. ball, personal foul, defense, automatic first down. Pritchett, he's a fifth year uh, man, a senior from Atlanta, where he went to Westminster High School. He and some of the other men who were there at the end of the Jerry Faust reign, remember that terrible shellacking they took in Miami their freshman year. Now a chance to complete the cycle and finish their college careers with a national championship. Harris drills the ball incomplete right through the midst of A.B. Brown. Oh, he has got a rocket for an arm. What a great athlete this young man is from Pittsburgh. He's got two more years of eligibility. Recruited by many of the major schools as a defensive back, West Virginia, knowing that Harris wanted desperately to play quarterback in college, said, hey, we got a spot for you. And how oh, they love this man in the state of West Virginia.
give on the draw goes to Anthony Brown. Didn't get too much, 41 yard line. Back to uh, Major Harris. Uh, Merlin, he said that uh, his idol growing up in Pittsburgh was not a Steeler, it was a Cleveland Brown quarterback, Brian Seif. He said he liked the way that Seif would bring uh, the Browns back. Well, he's in the role today, down 16 nothing. Well, I think that's logical. Sam Clancy had grown up in the same Hill District in Pittsburgh that he grew up in and had gone to the Cleveland Browns, kind of drew his attention over there, and Seif was somebody he watched a lot. Third and long. Harris. Shambling, throwing. And Craig Taylor has a first down at the 31 yard line. So they got the penalty on the. That was their initial first down. And now on the pass, third down, the second Mountaineer first down. And you got a shot, a little volley from the Mountaineer who said maybe this will help. We'll give him a little bang down here. And with all the uh, ammunition he has for those uh, games where they scored over 50, maybe he uh, figures he won't use it all today. Ball just outside the 30-yard line. Trailing 16 to nothing. Eight minutes left, second quarter. Brown, a big hole, and a solid open field tackle by Stan Smagala on that left corner, or Brown might have been gone. This is an offensive line that's played together since they were playing as the hamburger squad early on as freshmen. Fine blocking inside. Good job by Craig Taylor to the fullback coming up with a real shot. He may be the most underrated player on this West Virginia team. Second and three. Good second effort by Taylor. It was stopped at the line of scrimmage and there goes some flags. After the play, George Williams, 69, and Keith Wynn, 81. There's some popping going on down at the line of scrimmage, and what we may have seen was a retaliation. You don't want head to be ball. the guy to head back. Personal foul, defense. Oh, my personal. Yes, it was. Wynn was hammering right there, and he was the guy that got the first shot in, and George Williams took a shot later and takes the 15-yard penalty. You notice the difference in the uniforms. Uh, the West Virginia players have their names on the back and they have the Fiesta Bowl uh, emblem on the shoulders. Notre Dame has none of that. No names, no Fiesta Bowl. That was Lou Holtz, one of his techniques. It's just another game. He didn't want them to think of this game being so important. And I think it's paid off because I think his troops have adjusted emotionally better in this first quarter by far. And certainly it shows on the scoreboard. But here's the Mountaineers' best chance from the 11-yard line. Trailing 16-0, the toss to A.D. Brown. And he's bounced out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Good play by Smogala. Boy, he comes from uh, good heritage, does number 29 Stan Smogala from Burbank, Illinois. There was a feature on his dad, you might remember, uh, Stan Sr. At 42 years of age, Smogala's dad was playing football in junior college. Said he could not run him, uh, Stan Jr., until he was a junior in high school. Smagala there on that right corner for the Irish. He had the 64 yard touchdown with the interception against Southern Cal. Surprisingly, the Mountaineers stay on the ground, and Brown gets maybe three. Brian Flannery backing up Chris Zorich at the nose tackle. Makes the stop. This is a West Virginia team that runs a tremendous variety of formations and offensive differences, but uh, they have not been that effective. And it looks to me like they're just leaning on that big fifth year senior offensive line and saying, hey, we're coming up inside. Harris. Get some help. Will they run it? Yes. And now he throws, touchdown. And it was a legal pass. He threw it from the five-yard line. Jamie Lamont, number 15, has the score. Now, wait a minute now. He threw it from the five. The line of scrimmage was the seven. That may not be a legal pass. Now, they're trying to ask the question now, but this is not the kind of situation where we get a review from up above. There goes the flag. So the 
the touchdown will be nullified. Major Harris scrambling, and at the last minute, the Irish came up to meet him to deny the run, and so he flipped it to Lamont, but he had already passed the line of scrimmage. That carries a loss of down, so now it's fourth down. Let's take a peek, and let's see if we can pick out the spot where he finally stops to throw this football. He brings the team up. Pritchard right there stops and freezes his foot right on the five yard line. Yeah, there's no, no question. question about that. And there's no question that he was over the line of scrimmage. Only a five yard penalty, but severity of the call, you lose the down. So there's no second chance on third down. So fourth down, in comes Charlie Bauman to try a field goal, and he knocks it straight through from 29. That's not what the Mountaineers wanted. They were looking for seven or eight. They have to settle for three, and it's still the Irish, 16 to three. And the West Virginia Mountaineers have not been able to make the proper connections. Seven yard, seven yard line. He threw from the five, the penalty. They had to settle for the field goal at 16 to three, and now they must kick off to the freshman Ismail who returned two for touchdowns during the year and was awarded by the NCAA the kickoff return title this past season. There he is from Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. He runs a 4-2-8. That great moment of anticipation, almost like fighters coming into the ring before a big one. Charlie Bauman kicks it off for West Virginia. Kicks to the side, but Ismail is there at the 14. Stays on his feet. Boy, for a little guy, he's got some leg strength, carrying big men with him. 175 pound Ismail, and finally 99. Basil Proctor, who played here two years ago briefly with the University of Miami, then transferred to West Virginia, makes the stop. Ismail with a brother, Quaddy, who's a freshman wide receiver at Syracuse. They call him the missile and a baby brother. Suleiman, who's called the bomb. Well, he says his mom is called the launching pad. <laughs> <laughs> and you could see some power there from the rocket. He's got rocket-like strength in those legs. You're right, Dick. 37-yard line. 16-3 to three, Notre Dame leads. Six minutes, nine seconds left. Third in the second quarter. Tony Rice balling out to the 42-yard line. Ronaldo Turnbull tripped him up. Quick story about Tony Rice. He got his first opportunity to get into the game when Terry Andrzak was hurt. Pittsburgh, 87, got in there, and he was so worried about reading the defense that he lined up under the guard. <laughs> Anthony Johnson said, Tony, move over, move <laughs> over. He's really a popular player, as is Harris. They're not only the vote of the MVPs, of their respective teams by their teammates. They're probably the most popular players on each of the squads. Inside handoff to Tony Brooks, and he's shy of the first down at the 46 by a long yard. Herring again in on the tackle. One of the men leading that play around the end, Andy Heck, who moved unselfishly this year from tight end to offensive tackle. He said he went from being a slow tight end to a fast tackle. Can you imagine, can you imagine being asked to gain 30 pounds? Now, wouldn't that be fun? All the things you can eat? <laughs> now it would, yes, now it would. Uh, we ate five times a day, he said, to put on that extra 30 pounds. Third and two from the 45. And to give to Culver, the fresh double score the touchdown. He fumbled the ball, and who's got it? Second time today, the ball is on the ground, and it looks like Notre Dame has recovered again. Tim Ryan, the guard. Oh, that's and they fumbled forward for another first down. Both times, the ball going forward for first down yardage, and both times, someone in the same uniform color getting the ball. Ryan, on the left-hand side of your screen, on the ground as that ball pops loose, a chance right there by Bo, Bo Orlando, number 22, but the ball slipped underneath him, and Ryan was able to get on it. Freshman Steve Grant, number four, forced the fumble. First down, Irish. Bryce hit, but does not go down until he picks up three. Fine play by Pat Marlette, number 95. Mm -hmm. 
average size of these two offensive lines compared with the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll see them against Buffalo on NBC next Sunday. Shows you how big these young lads are. Well, they are not small. And I mentioned the strength of this West Virginia team, but the Irish themselves have a very, very good strength program and some strong players on their side of the line as well. Fast moving first half, 345 remaining. And now Rice down the middle has a wide open. Number 22, Anthony Johnson fumbles. But was he down? He was down. They point to the spot. Anthony Johnson having a big day so far here today. That's got to be exciting for a young man who grew up in South Bend and worked as a, a messenger for the ushers in the stadium. Had a chance to watch the Irish play through his life and dream of one day putting on that golden helmet. Well, here he is. A chance to help his team to a national title. And so far, so good. His brother Mike was a walk-on linebacker at Notre Dame preceding him. The Irish on the move with a 16-3 lead. Rice again. Oh, he consistently breaks out of the initial hit. And finally, it's Steve Grant, a freshman from Miami, who secures him. Dick, one of the things that Lou Holtz really believes in is making it tough on his quarterbacks in practice. Uh, he really growls at them. He's up in their face. And his philosophy is very simple. He said, I want to make it so tough in practice that when they get in the game, it's a piece of cake. Second down and nine. And a whistle, and that could be delayed. Yeah, I believe it's too much time. Dead ball, ball start, oh. offense, still second down. Somebody getting an early jump. Looks like uh, Andy Heck was a little twitchy there at left tackle. 31 yard line, they set the ball. Let's see if we can see who is getting the move now. It's the right guard getting the move. Is that Ryan in there? Tim Ryan or Tim Grunard? It's Grunard. So second down, a short 14. There's the Rice. Action. And well read on the corner, Scott Summits. We have not seen as much of the option as we anticipated. Both of these teams coming in. That was the mainstay of their offensive diet. We have not seen very much of it. We did see it there on a good play by West Virginia's defense to shut it down for a short game. The Lou Holtz figures this is the time of his life. Said never had a hole in one. He's an avid golfer until last year he got two of them. Said what did your uh, friend say? Said uh, press. <laughs> <laughs> No pressing here. On third and long, Rice. To Ismail for a touchdown. Boy, that ball threaded through several West Virginia hands to the rocket. And he shot into the end zone with a 29-yard score. And the Irish are really celebrating the new year. Tony Rice, who had seen so many articles written and had so often been asked about his passing ability, has answered the critics today. Reggie Ho tries the point after. And the Irish lead. 23 to 3 going 63 yards in eight plays. Tony Rice with a clothesline throw to the Rocket Ismail for the score. The Rocket Ismail just moments ago shouting hello Wilkesboro. Hey, How you doing? His mother is celebrating her birthday today. He said I'm playing. Tony Rice's mother is celebrating the birthday of the man who threw the ball to Ismail and said, uh, you usually see those kids in the sidelines saying, hi, Mom. Well, Tony Rice will get his chance to wish uh, Mom a happy birthday. I think he already has. Napoleon. At the 13. And he returns just to the 30, and a flag is down. 
tackle made by Grimm of Notre Dame. We may have had a block below the waist. One forty three remaining in the half. The penalty will push the Mountaineers even deeper back. All the officials from the Southwest Conference Frank Shepard the referee Messrs. Voss Coleman Underwood Moore Lewis and Evans on the run back. First down. Now that'll take it back to the 17 yard line and not much time for Major Harris 143 trailing 23 to 3. And we have a timeout. Someday, all Air Express companies will have landing rights in Japan, just like Federal Express. But until then, you'll just have to pretend. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Father to son. It's what we've always done. Gillette. The Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. The best a man can get. Shearson Lehman Hutton. Where we stand. We believe that as investors' time frames have grown shorter, the real purposes of investing have been obscured. We believe investing is not a series of short-term economic events, but a long-term process, and that only the long view can lead to long-range success for individuals, for corporations, and for a nation. Shearson Lehman Hutton. Michelob, a truly great tasting beer anytime, but especially after the night falls. Shouldn't your night belong to Michelob? A reminder, later in today's game, we'll be selecting the most valuable player, Sunkist. We'll donate $2,500 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Arizona in his name. Now you expect the Mountaineers to put the ball in the air now, and the Irish loosen their deep defense. Instead, it's a draw to Taylor, the fullback, and he just gets a few. Shy of the 20, met by Don Grimm, a sophomore linebacker from Scottsdale, Pennsylvania. One of the things that Barry Alvarez's defense has done is basically to play through most of this first half with just four defensive backs. That means a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, and it's been very effective. Harris gets away from Stams, then throws to the 30 and a first down to wide receiver Grantis Bell, his first catch. He's from Fort Lauderdale. No huddle. 115 to go. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. 11 yards on that pass. Major Harris getting an audible call out to his wide receivers. The big man we talked about, Reggie Rembert, right here, matched up with Todd Light. Speed on speed. Good protection. Now breaks down. Now the throw. And incomplete. It was intercepted or the ball hit the ground. Wes Pritchett says he caught the ball, but the official says, uh-uh, the ball hit the ground first. Arnold Ali, a freshman from Carson, California, was right on the receiver, and then Pritchett, along with the Stonebreaker and, and Stams, uh, the three amigos, they got a great sense of humor. He'll, he'll talk about that one. That pass should have been caught right into the hands of Taylor, and Dick, let's watch as it touches the ground right there good call by the officials it's quite possible that major Harris may have a problem with his left shoulder I noticed as he ran onto the field he wasn't pumping that arm at all kind of holding it tight to his shoulder we'll keep an eye on him there's a throw to the sidelines and an immediate hit on Grantis Bell by Stan Smagala Final minute of the first half, 23 to 3, Notre Dame. Mountaineers frantically trying to get something before the gun that ends this half. Third down. Not calling a timeout for some reason. Up the middle to the 40 goes fullback Taylor. Pritchett down. makes the stops. It's very close to a first down. 
And now the signal given. First down, West Virginia. They have three timeouts left, but for some reason, well, that'll stop the clock as they move the chains. But uh, then it started as soon as they're in place. 32 seconds. You'd think that they would be getting them called at this point. Now the clock starts. Harris going deep for Bell. Incomplete. He was out of bounds anyway. And good coverage by Terrell and Smagala. Smagala with 4-3-5 speed in the 40. And Terrell with 4-3-4 speed. Kind of difficult to outrun those folks. And I think that's the frustration that Don Nealon is facing right now. I don't believe that West Virginia has faced this kind of speed anywhere on their schedule. And they're having real difficulty coping with it. Barry Alvarez very proud of his defense and the slowest man on this defensive team George Williams a tackle at 282 pounds runs a five flat 40 deck. Mm. These guys can fly. And the NFL teams uh, can't boast of that kind of defensive speed. Harris with a flip to his tight end Keith Wynn and Wynn is dragged down at the 50 yard line goes out of bounds stops the clock 13 seconds. But uh, those little short gainers aren't going to do it for West Virginia. They need one big play here if they're going to add to their three points of the first half. Not good numbers for Major Harris. Has had a very effective year of passing, and his forte is the long ball. They've been able to get the big gainers, but they have not found those openings against this Notre Dame defense today. See that uh, defense looking for the long ball now as they drift back. Three man rush. And now stands on a delayed blitz. Harris on the run, throwing for Rembert. They finally found Rembert at the 14 yard line. And with four seconds left, West Virginia at least in position to try a field goal. They'll call timeout. Well, every third time that Rembert has touched the ball, there's been a touchdown. He's had seven out of 21. This one does not go for the TD, but does put them in position to go for some points. And with a timeout, four seconds to go in the half. We'll return to see if they go for six. Chance to watch the delayed blitz by Stams. And there's Rembert drifting across the field. Scramble by Major Harris and finally unloads the football. Pat Terrell, 15, there to dump him out of bounds. And it would appear that the decision by Don Nealon is to go for the six points, to go for the touchdown. Boy, no, here it comes. Now they've changed their mind. That's a pretty tough one from the 14, one shot of the touchdown. So they're going to go for the three and try to head into the locker room with another score at least. Well, they want some points on the board. And this is... This is a veteran team. They've been around a long time. They've got a lot of experience. They believe in themselves. 31-yard attempt by Bauman is right in the middle. And that's the end of the first half. A half in which Notre Dame showed its firepower. And the Irish flexed its muscles defensively, stopping the nation's number two scoring team, West Virginia's second only to Oklahoma State, and allowing them just a pair of field goals. 23-3. Now 23 to 6 at the intermission. Let's go to Reggie Rucker. You, you started to move the ball, Coach. Was your team tight to begin the game? Well, I don't know, Reg. We got such poor field position, and Major got hurt on the first play of the game, and he's not uh, operating quite like uh, he normally does, so it's a little bit of a problem. But we're going to have to move a lot better. Are there some th things you could see that you can do against Notre Dame in the second half? Well, we hope so. They're playing real well. We're not playing very good. We're not playing aggressive enough, so we're going to have to get more aggressive. What can you say to him in the locker room? Well, we better start playing like we know how. Thank you. All right, and there's the word that uh, Major Harris, what a tough break for the Mountaineers, was injured, not seriously enough to take him out of the game, but is feeling some pain and is not 100% hurt in the first play of the game. The Notre Dame Irish. 23, the Mountaineers of West Virginia 6 will be back after these messages from your local station. 
and the fans here, 72,000 plus at Sun Devil Stadium, being entertained by the West Virginia Marching Band, 321 strong. The director, Don Wilcox, the assistant, Dave Sanderfield, drum major, Armando Bonilla, and Dale Stemple. And how high is the moon? West Virginia can boast of the largest percussion section of any collegiate band. You see them centered in that formation as they ready for their second presentation of their halftime routine. Sport and Life from Porgy and Bess. the pride of West Virginia, the West Virginia Marching Band here at Sun Devil Stadium in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And now, welcome back to the Fiesta Bowl. We're at halftime. Notre Dame, number one, leading number three, West Virginia, 23 to six. West Virginia wrapping up its entertainment program. We'll hear from the Notre Dame band when we return. But right now, let's go to Gail Gardner in New York. Hello, welcome back to our studios in New York. Championship Monday continues here on NBC. Gail Gardner along with Jimmy Cephalo and Don Shula. And we are at halftime of the Fiesta Bowl with Notre Dame leading West Virginia by the score of 23 to 6. Now, earlier today on NBC, you saw Syracuse defeat LSU in the Hall of Fame Bowl. The final score there was 23 to 10. And the Orange setting the tone early in that one. The opening drive for them. Robert Drummond gets the handoff, goes in from three yards out. Drummond 122 yards on the day. Later, LSU gambles fourth and one on the 11. Victor Jones, though, is stuck as the Orange shut down the Tigers' offense, and they win the Hall of Fame Bowl. The final score again was 23 to 10. Meanwhile, at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, UCLA, Terry Donahue win their seventh straight bowl game, and that is an NCAA record, beating Arkansas 17 to three. This is their top quarterback, Troy Aikman, and he hits sophomore tight end Corwin Anthony from two yards out. UCLA over Arkansas 17 to three in the Cotton Bowl, holding the Razorbacks to just 44 yards of total offense. In Orlando, the lowest scoring Citrus Bowl in 31 years as Clemson defeats Oklahoma 13 to six. Now late in the game, the Sooners with a chance to try to pull this one out deep in Clemson territory and watch quarterback Jamel Holloway. He is being pressed. He's scrambling, scrambling, looking to the end zone. And he does manage to get it away, but his pass to Damon Stell is knocked away. 13-6, the final as the Tigers win the Citrus Bowl. The Sooners now on probation for the next two years, so this is their last bowl game for two years. And another game going on right now, the Rose Bowl in Pasadena at the Michigan Wolverines, the USC Trojans. USC now leading that game by the score of 14-3. Uh, Michigan with a 49-yard field goal from Mike Gillette and USC with two Rodney Pete touchdowns. And of course, coming up later tonight on NBC, the 55th annual Orange Bowl, Miami Hurricanes hoping circumstances will give them a shot at being number one. For more on the Miami-Nebraska showdown, here are Don Crickey and Bob Trump. Thank you, Gail. These are the quiet moments at the Orange Bowl, as right now, the Miami Hurricanes are getting set to go into their locker room. 
It's an ironic twist here. The last time these two teams played, Miami was the away team, even if it's a home ball yard, and Nebraska, the home team, is the Big 8 representative, but everyone knows most of the 75,000 tonight will be rooting for the Hurricanes of Miami. Nebraska coming in with the best rushing team in the country, over 380 yards a game. And it's an interesting challenge tonight because Miami's one of the top three teams in the country at stopping the run. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. Interesting, Trump, that these two teams are the winningest college football teams of the decade of the 1980s. Who do you like tonight? Well, I'm not sure I could pick as a winner, but this should be a very entertaining football game, Don. You're right. Since 1983, Miami is 62-10, Nebraska 62-11. So these two teams win an awful lot of the games that they play, and the entertaining factor of these two teams tonight is the manner in which they get it done offensively. As you said, Nebraska runs it. They have a huge play offense, and with the Miami Hurricanes, probably the most sophisticated passing game you'll find in college football. Motion, they throw it to backs out the backfield. Great entertaining football. Well, they're both very set, and of course, right now, they're huddled somewhere watching what's going on at the Fiesta Bowl. We'll be ready for the 55th Orange Bowl very shortly. Right now, back to Gail. All right, gentlemen, and witness the Fiesta Bowl. The emergence of the black quarterback is certainly not a myth. It is happening, and it is a testament of the triumph of ability and determination over prejudice. It has never been more apparent than the last three days. You had only to watch the NFL playoffs and today's college bowl games to understand. Ahmad Rashad has more. doubted me uh, making it to the top and that made me work harder because when you're going and fighting against the black quarterback situation and then you've got people telling you your friends saying that you can't make it I didn't want to take it negatively I wanted to take it positive and use it as a way to work harder I tried to set an example for younger players and I, and I figured that the better that I do the better the Doug Williams and the Randall Cunningham's do it's gonna help the other guys uh, in their development it's gonna help them as far as their thinking is concerned whether they want to play that position or Um, like around here and everything are out of town and I am greet myself by meeting people and they say well What position you play running back or defensive back and I said quarterback and they said, oh, oh No, no, you're not a quarterback or oh, you're the black quarterback. Yeah, you know, but I just sit back and laugh at it. It's kind of funny to towards me I made it, you know, I just told them where, wherever I went that I wanted to play quarterback and all the schools I visited, they all had black quarterbacks, so I didn't want to go somewhere and be the first one. There have been three constant factors in the life of Major Harris. One, he's always been a great quarterback. Two, he's always been a winner. And three, he's always been black. But the neat thing about that is the third factor has nothing to do with the first two. I think it's great for the game. I think uh, it just shows that some of the stigmas that have been against us for so many years are, are, are showing that they were just stigmas, and these guys are capable of leading their football teams. See, like, well, they said, well, a black quarterback can never make it in college or professional. You know, look at it now. Me and um, Major Harris are going for the national championship, you know, two blacks quarterback, and, um, you know, professional football now, Randy Cunningham and Doug Wim, they have a successful season, and, you know, everything is opening up now. Two black quarterbacks playing in a game today which could possibly be for the national championship. Well, I must say I feel very good about that because when I played Little League football, it was told to me that I could play any position on the team except for quarterback. 
Well, things have changed. As a matter of fact, this year, my son asked me, as he attempted to play Little League football, what position he should play. I said quarterback. And if he's watching today, he can see that here you have two quarterbacks that are playing, not because of the color of their skin, but because of their ability. Well, this is a great day in college sports, but it's even a greater day for sports in America. Thank you, Ahmad. And Ahmad, in talking about what happened to him, really bringing up the unfortunate sort of tracking that did take place for many years, especially on the lower levels, the high school level. Are we past that era? But I think the key to what he said is that blacks are now given an opportunity at an earlier age. So they're better trained in high school and they're better trained in college, as, as we're seeing here tonight, and they're getting the opportunity in pro ball to show what they can do. And Doug Williams last year showed what he could do. Warren Moon this year. I mean, these guys are doing an outstanding job. I would hate for one minute to think that a coach would keep a ball player, a winning ball player, from playing any position, you know, depending on race, creed, or color. I, the guy, if he can play, should be given the opportunity to play. And Ahmad put it so succinctly before, uh, when you think about it, if a talented player in person like Ahmad Rashad could be denied, how many youngsters have been denied? And how many times have we as football fans denied the opportunity to watch these talented young people perform? That's what upsets me about it. Okay. Two fine quarterbacks today. Well, we got Tony Rice. He was four out of six in the first half for 119 yards. He had 50 yards rushing. I thought one of the one of the most beautiful plays was early in a ball game. He goes back to pass, and then he scrambles. And he not only has the the quickness uh, and the speed to scramble, but watch the power when he runs over the tackler. Tony Rice is not is not a real big quarterback, but he runs over this defensive player from West Virginia coming up to make the play and continues on and gets additional yardage. That was pretty impressive. Then after they've been running the option all along, Rice comes down the line, fakes the option, throws the pass. This, is, this has to drive a defensive coach crazy because you have to defend against the option. And watch what it does to the linebackers. They're pulled up looking for the option. He then drops back the pass, and you're going to see their tight end getting wide open, Derek Brown, in the middle of the field. The four completions, two of them were big plays to Derek Brown. This is the first one. Then he comes right back <clears throat> after this, and he rolls out to his left and throws back to the right. This is play action. He sets up, and again, the, the target is Derek Brown, the receiver on the right. He whips it back across the field. The defensive man gambles and, and uh, doesn't make the play, and this gives Derek Brown that much more running room. He takes it down, and this sets up their touchdown. Here's Major Harris then, too. We talked about his ability to improvise all along here. That improvisation gets him to a bit of trouble. Right, the key is the line of scrimmage is a seven-yard line. He starts to scramble. He makes a decision that he's going to run. He goes down to the five-yard line, which, of course, he crosses the line of scrimmage, throws the ball for an apparent touchdown, but the, the officials were right on top of it. They saw that he crossed the line of scrimmage and uh, took the touchdown the right way. They had to settle for the field goal. All right, Bauman with a 29-yard field goal. Uh, they go on the score at halftime, in case you're just joining us, 23-6, to Notre Dame over West Virginia. Yeah. Okay, so the question, of course, can Don Nealon rally his troops to come back from a pretty big halftime deficit? We're going to find that out right now as we go back to Dick and Merlin in Tempe, Arizona for second half action. And it's interesting that the Irish, for the first time the entire afternoon, as they went into their fight song, a ray of sunshine hit the center of the field. Perhaps appropriate. Not much sunshine for West Virginia. And we talked at the beginning of this game that the toughest job on the field probably belonged to Major Harris because he's facing the strength of this Irish right. defense. And it's gotten even tougher. They talked about an injury on the very first play to him. We still don't know whether that's a shoulder or an arm injury to his left arm. But a question now, Dick, are we going to see Greg Jones, a backup quarterback for West Virginia, or will Major play with the injury in the second half? The injury to Harris certainly does answer one major question of the first half of West Virginia. Why didn't they use the option more? Obviously, Harris was hurting. And it's obvious that when you have been led by a quarterback who has been so effective, he had four poor games to start out last year in 87, but in 88, he has been brilliant. And they have depended so strongly on him. It's very difficult when you have that much trust and confidence in a man. Suddenly he's not able to perform, and the offense has suffered drastically as a result of it. But in the meantime, Merlin, uh, Notre Dame, even with a healthy Major Harris, was really impressive, both sides of the ball. And speed, as we mentioned, seems to be the dominant factor here for Notre Dame. Well, let's go down to the field and Reggie Rucker. 
Coach, you downplayed Tony Rice's passing ability all week. He's been outstanding in the first half. He has played very well, uh, but the game's only halfway over. Are you surprised that your team played so well after the long layoff? I, I felt we had improved tremendously, but you never know. We've only played a half. West Virginia's an explosive football team. This game's a far long way from being over. Maybe a little bit of the Irish spirit working for you now? Well, there is an Irish spirit, and it is with us. Thank you, Coach. Lou Holtz, his team 30 minutes away from another national football championship. And they uh, create the Irish fans young. <laughs> Notre Dame, one of the great universities in our nation. South Bend, Indiana, the scene. And oh, so rich in tradition it is.